Well, thank you for everyone being here. Um, obviously, like I said last week, we were excited and ready to play. Um, and I think our, our play on the field displayed that. And I was real proud of the way our kids competed against uh, one of the top teams in the country. And um, we learned a lot from this game. You know, I spent uh, a lot of time uh, Sunday with our staff and uh, also yesterday uh, with our staff. And we had a great meeting yesterday. Uh, this young man sitting to my left you know, came back and, uh, you know, has really done a great job in terms of developing his skills. And uh, he's a leader, he's a winner. Uh, he had a great game, a solid game. You know, we talked a lot about uh, not turning the ball over, and that was a big part of it. Um, and uh, you know, he was able to distribute the ball, get us out of some jams, and uh, you know, and, and be able to move the chains. Uh, you know, they had us outnumbered, 92,000 to none. And, you know, and uh, we had them on their heels, and you know, they were booing their uh, their home team. So uh, they might have had us outnumbered, but we had them right where we wanted them, a uh, one possession game at that point. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we also did some research. I think this was interesting that uh, Bo Oliver was the second running back. All of last year they had one running back <clears throat> that had 100 yards against that defense. And uh, Bo and the offensive line, the tight ends, receivers, uh, did a great job. Uh, you know, real proud of them. Uh, we were 100% in our red zone scoring. We talked about not turning the ball over. Uh, the things that, uh, you know, kept us uh, away from uh, being able to pull up a major upset and shock the world uh, was the fact that there were some big plays. You know, they had some explosive players and, you know, and, and certainly we knew that. Uh, we just couldn't minimize them. Uh, special teams, defense, uh, those are things that we've got to be able to do and then still be able to uh, show that we can come out in the second half like we finished in the first half, uh, keeping the chains moving, keeping our defense off the field, even though late in the game, uh, and with about four minutes left in the game, we were able to drive the ball down, and uh, Zordish was able to put it in the end zone. So uh, we're excited about uh, you know coming back home against Morgan State, our first home opener uh, for the season, and I know our guys are excited about uh, starting a new winning tradition. Yeah, when you looked at the tape from Morgan State, what did you did you feel like your defenders were in positions to make plays on their runners, or did their runners just, was it a physical, overpowering situation? I think it was a combination, uh, Nick. I think there was uh, there were times uh, that we were in position. Uh, you know, we were there physically, but we didn't wrap up, you know, and some of that's a credit to, uh, to Gurley. You know, he's a pretty good football player, and uh, we saw him in pregame. Uh, but, uh, you know, he certainly had a, you know, a great day. So they've got a very good player there. But, you know, I think structurally overall, I, we were really pleased with our play calling and our schemes and the soundness of that. You know, it's still about players making play at the point of attack and executing. Um, and there were some things there, too, as our coaches will look at and say, hey, you know, maybe we could have had this call on or that we could have done something maybe slightly different. But, you know, at the end of the day, I was, I was very happy with the way our kids played fast. They played smart and they played physical for four quarters. They weren't intimidated. It was a hot, humid day um, from that standpoint. And Mark Rick paid our football program, um, uh, you know, a, a very high compliment. And he said, hey, we were well conditioned and we played hard for four quarters and we weren't intimidated by the environment. And I can certainly tell you, and Alex can certainly, uh, you know, respond to that, uh, that our kids did. You know, they were excited to play and they were locked in for four quarters. Coach Tepper had the first few drives had people moving around and going all the most mad scientist type of stuff it looked like. Is that something for Georgia or is that kind of how he operates? Uh, it's a little bit of both. He is a mad scientist. That guy's been coaching a long time, you know, and uh, you know, there's been a lot of experience uh, in, in that man's uh, mind and heart and soul and he did a good job with our kids and our kids believe in the system and you know, they were able to uh, to respond. So, you know, we certainly want to be <clears throat> a defense that uh, keeps offenses off guard. Um, they had a couple moments in the game where they kind of caught us a little bit off guard. Uh, and the same thing from our standpoint. There was one time right before the half, they had 12 guys on the field, you know, and we caught them. So, you know, it was kind of back and forth. But I like where Lou has our defense, and it'll be exciting to see how they uh, step up this week and play against Morgan State. Jeff, can you touch on what you saw in Going with the regard to the special teams on the kickoff return to block. Yeah, that was uh, completely unacceptable. Um, and, you know, we had guys in position, you know, and we just didn't uh, execute the way I would expect. And that was, as I mentioned after the game, I mentioned it to our team at halftime. 
you know, those are the things. We spent a great deal of time on it. We got to get that cleaned up, and we've got to improve. And you know, nothing is more important to me than special teams. And, uh, and I know our team understands that. So, um, you know, the block punt, the kickoff return for 100 yards. Um, you know, I look at that too. I probably should have kicked it to the guy. You know, should have kicked that doggone thing as hard as we can out of the end zone. You know, to eliminate that situation. But. Um, you know, I think our kids understand completely, and uh, they are pleased with what happened in that moment. But uh, we got to respond, you know, and that's the key, and that's what we had to do before the half, and we were able to do that. Well, it's not the first time that that you saw Alex as a starting quarterback. What did you learn about him and his maturity and and the, his style from what you saw on Saturday? Uh, <clears throat> this young man is a leader. He's a winner. He's a competitor. Um, he, it matters to him. It's a priority in his life, and uh, and I'm thankful for his parents for putting that in him because uh, you know that's something uh, that I think is something that is acquired over a period of time, and you know it's important. Uh, you know his high school career uh, speaks volumes of his his ability to lead uh, a team, and that's what I was uh, excited about seeing him have an opportunity. Uh, you know a year ago, Alex, uh, you know was in position to potentially be in the starting quarterback. Uh, you know, Chaz came in and, uh, you know, he did a great job being a team player, being ready to play. And he's, you know, he's waited his chance to, to get to this point. And, and, you know, it's not surprising to me because I see him every day, um, you know, what he's capable of doing. And he wants to get better. You know, he's certainly not pleased uh, with the outcome. And, and there was plays in the game that I think he wish he had back. But that's what it's all about. It's about growing and developing and learning. And, you know, and he's nobody works harder than him. He was in there Sunday watching film. He was in there yesterday. Um, he wants to get it right, and that's important. To our football team—they've got a lot of faith and confidence in him. Uh, so it's going to be exciting to see how well uh, he's able to take from week one uh, the things that he saw and experienced, and then you know be able to make the biggest jump and improvement into week two. Alex, there seemed to be a, you know a lot of conviction in you and, and how you were running the offense out there. Do you notice it? Do you feel different than you know, the last time around? Uh, yeah, I've said the experience is the biggest thing. So I think just the experience in playing maybe my first year has helped. And you just the game starts to feel more comfortable. It starts to slow down. So yeah, definitely as you get older, as you play more games, you definitely feel more comfortable. And what did that game in particular maybe do for your confidence? Uh, Really, it was just another game, and, and I, I mean that. I mean, my confidence has been there, and, and just being able to go out and play, it, was, it felt good. It was fun. It, it, it was uh, it was good to put your team in a position to maybe win the game, and we fell short of that, which was something we uh, didn't want to happen, but we, we're going to take the good out of the game and, and move on to this week. Well, I can assume there are guys, maybe yourself included, and teammates that, that walked away from that game saying, you know what, it was pretty, we did a lot of things well, you know? Kickoff return hurt. The right. couple things hurt, but a lot of things well. You know that that might be said. You know what? Because there were a lot of there was a lot of talk. We're, we're a good team. We're a good team right. all through camp. That that kind of reaffirmed it. You know. Yeah. Going back, you we know definitely I'm, we definitely feel confident in our ability, and we definitely know we're a good team. Uh, you know, coach even harped on it. We're we're not for moral victories, though. You know, we we we're not going to feel great about a loss, but we definitely are going to take the good things out of this game. And, move on and we already have really we've moved on yesterday but uh, we're, we're ready to get better and, and get a win. Alex was the, were the throws to the tight ends by design were they just what the defense was taking you to and then on the flip side of it you look at that and say we s still have to try to get our, our balls to more of the wide receivers maybe than, than we did in, in that game. Uh, the throws to the tight ends were uh, by design we were definitely a thought uh, in our reads and we want to get everybody the ball, especially the tight ends. We want to do a better job of getting them the ball more, and I was glad that we were able to do that. And it'll open everything else up for the wide receivers because we have a bunch of good wide receivers that'll help us out. We'll talk a little bit about them and your relationship with them. Obviously, we know Alex has the resume. A couple of these other guys, we're still trying to learn stuff about. Yeah, uh, the relationship with the receivers is great. You know, every. Especially Fred Lee and uh, Alex Newt, they, they really do a great job in, in leading that group of receivers. And you're able to see guys like Cordero Dixon coming up, and uh, I feel like a lot of people are going to get to know him and, and what he's capable of. So it's good. Uh, Fred and, and Newt have done a great job in, in really maturing those receivers.
yeah, I, I guess you know Youngstown beating Pittsburgh reinforces the fact that that you take nothing for granted going into a game like that this week. Yeah, absolutely, it does. I mean, you can't, you can't. It's any 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 day a team can be beat, and you really can't go into a game with the mindset that it's going to be a pushover because that's when you get beat. Jeff, you talked about that at all? Absolutely. You know, I mean, we got to measure, um, you know, uh, our success to our standard. Nobody else is in that. That's a big part of this. <clears throat> and I talked to him yesterday. Um, you know, only these players know if they gave it everything they had, every single player, every single play. Um, you know, and I've said many times uh, the scoreboard will display, it won't decide uh, the outcome of the game. And no matter who you play, whether it's Georgia, Morgan State, Pittsburgh, whoever, Youngstown State, any of these teams, we got to go by our standard, and that's what I'm trying to get across to our football team. We set the uh, the standard. We choose. We decide uh, the level of uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the level we play at with our speed. You know, I want players to play fast. I think that's a big part of this, and our coaches have to make sure that they've got these kids dialed in to know what they need to do. I want them to be smart. I want them to be intelligent football players. Uh, be aware of things that are going on moment by moment. Uh, and we have to do a good job being great teachers uh, as coaches. And then last but not least, I want a physical football team. Uh, I want guys that are, are playing with their head, their heart, their pads. And uh, and I want them to go out there and, and do those things because the winning will take care of itself. And then you'll never be in those predicaments uh, like some teams right now. We know 50% of teams won and 50% lost. And uh, we know that that was, uh, you know, and so half the teams are out there feeling like, holy cow, what, what just happened? And the other ones are feeling really good about themselves. We got to get on that side. Uh, and this week we got to establish that uh, based on uh, our week of preparation for Morgan State. Obviously it's important to win games, everybody knows that. But uh, UB Stadium is something where maybe in, in, in times of the past it hasn't been that level of intimidation where a team has to look back at the scoreboard and say, wow, they don't lose here. So I guess that's an important thing to put down as well. Yeah, I want those guys, 105 of them, uh, ready to go. Uh, absolutely. And we talked about it last year. We saw that. Um, you know, we certainly were able at times to, to do a great job at home, take care of our home turf. Uh, but we need to build that tradition. You're right. You know, we, we want it to be a very loud and antagonistic crowd. You know, when people come into western New York, uh, you know, we certainly want uh, our true blue fans and, and all of our family and friends uh, to be behind our football team. And we have to display that, that type of personality on the field. Um, you know, just down the hallway, uh, I'd love for everybody just to take a minute to walk uh, down the hallway. Uh, something very special was just uh, put in uh, that's going to continue helping us uh, explain and, and tell a story about the history tradition of our football program and this great university and uh, it's a, it's exciting time because I think that's something that you build over time it just doesn't happen you know and that's what this program is doing right now we're pioneering things you know we're going through that process but we certainly want to be very dominant at home and we want people to understand that that's what's exciting about this football team they, they've taken a great deal of pride and being able to do that, and our play has to represent it on Saturday night. Nice honor for Colby, Defensive Player of the Week against an SEC team. Well, you're absolutely right, and I appreciate you bringing it up because Colby has worked extremely hard, um, very coachable. Uh, comes from a great family, he's a great human being, uh, you know, and he's a, he's a very solid football player. And, you know, when you get recognized, you know, for your efforts of, you know, I mean, he had six tackles. And, you know, he had two sacks, two TFLs. I mean, you know, he's all over the place. And, you know, that just says uh, there's a lot of people that respect the work uh, that we're doing here. And then young men like Colby who have really stepped up their leadership role. And then uh, also Alex Zordich here was named our university at Buffalo uh, Athlete of the Week. Uh, so we're very proud of these two young men and uh, the work that they're doing and, and how, it, how it impacts bringing others along. I think that's a big part of this, you know, guys like Alex Zordich, um, you know, he inspires me, he inspires our football team, his teammates, so does Colby, 
and it's great to have that on that side of the ball. We, we have a, a very good group of juniors and, and sophomores, along with the uh, the solid group of senior leadership. But the numbers are in our program are heavy, and uh, we have 21 juniors in our program and 22 sophomores, and the majority of them are the ones that are starting, uh, along with that senior class uh, that we have. So. Uh, the bright, the future's bright, uh, but these guys want to get it done now, and Kobe's really done uh, a tremendous job for us. Coach Pete Alex run and pass very decisively, decisions, quick decisions. You know, as you mentioned, most of them being the right decisions. How do you govern that when someone's as physically gifted as Alex as a runner? Um, obviously, you've had plenty of those guys in the past, but in Alex in particular. Well, it's another uh, dimension. Uh, that you love to have because uh, you know you saw Alex uh, drop back a few times and avoid the rush, elude the rush, and uh, was able to uh, pick up some key first downs and make some big explosive plays. You know by scrambling a little bit, and, and he was also looking downfield to make big throws downfield. Uh, but I just you know there's uh, there's a lot of confidence uh, you know with Alex uh, just because of the way he carries himself, uh, the way he studies, the way he handles himself in the locker room. Uh, this man means business when he goes out there, and it's important to him. And that's uh, that's what we've always seen in Alex Ordich. I saw that when we were recruiting him out of high school. Uh, and so, you know, we're looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, his growth and development. Uh, but, you know, one game does not define Alex Ordich, you know, and I think that's a big part of this, and that's what keeps him motivated and keeps him ready to, and, and hungry uh, to help this football team achieve success. Uh, you know, week in and week out as we get ready for the MAC uh, conference coming up. Is uh, learning how to slide something you've clearly added to your game since uh, your freshman year? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Learning how to slide, I think you could tell from the first one I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> but after that, I kind of picked up on it. That was the first time I've ever slid, so it's glad to get that out of my belt. Finally, learn how to do it. He's only been in football. He's <laughs> never played baseball. It goes against your nature, though, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I, you can tell I was a little indecisive as to what to do, but I picked up on it. <laughs> Is that something the coaches yeah. hinted and suggested to you that try not to run over people as much? Yeah, that's. I've been hinting that since my freshman year after I broke my ribs. So it's just something I've learned how to do, which is good for the team. When do you know when to run, or, or I mean, is there just something in, in, in that clock inside you, or you know, that, that when you see, I mean, that, that that one run, the long one, there was not no one between the numbers. I mean, did you see that, or did you sense the time says it's time to get out of here? It's a little bit of both. You, you, you have a, an idea of how much time you have. You know, usually a good three or four seconds, and you got to get going. But uh, other there's other coverages too that they don't give up that you know that you might have a chance to run, but. We definitely want to look at, see what we have downfield first and avoid any rush and really, really just make positive yards. At the same time with that, Jeff, do you tell him, like sometimes coaches will tell quarterbacks sitting there and wait, you know, wait for your receiver to get open. Do you tell him if that lane's there, just take it, go, don't worry about it? Well, absolutely, you know, and, and Alex, uh, you know, made a very good point. You know, every situation is a little different, you know, and, uh, you know, there's times that, uh, yeah, we need to get the ball downfield. And, there's times that you can take the ball and, and run with it. And, you know, I think with his his understanding and his gift of feeling the different uh, ways teams are trying to attack him, but also, you know, what we want to do is get our big guys up front with our backs to be able to block to the echo of the whistle. You know, we certainly know that uh, against a great rush defense like a uh, pass rush defense like Georgia had, uh, there was going to be a little bit more discussion uh, if, if, the, if the protection it doesn't hold up for the length of time to get the ball out of your hands downfield that we wanted you to get out of it. And, uh, but he's got a good sense for that, and I think that's something that we're all very confident that Alex will make the right choices. And uh, But we still feel like if we can hold up in our protections that we still want to be able to sit back there and give him more time to throw the ball. We certainly don't want to just drop back there and get in the habit of running every time uh, because there's some things downfield that are developing that we want to take advantage of. But he did a great job Saturday, some key and critical situations. And each game is going to be different because each coordinator is going to call him a little differently. And, uh, you know, this Saturday, he just, you know, he made some big time explosive plays in some key times that really helped our offense. Can you talk about how uh, the 
great in the play of the offensive line. It seemed like the initial push was was there, and that they, you know, they were never overwhelmed, but that they closed so fast. Yeah, wow. yeah, exactly. You know, that's that's the talent. Uh, you know, that's that's just talent. You know, they're they're a good football team, and they have a lot of very good football players. But I was very proud of the way our big guys up front. You know, that was an area uh, that I was real proud with Coach Shorter and that entire offensive line. Uh, it speaks volumes to. To, to go to Georgia on the road in that hot, humid day, to be able to get a team, uh, get our offense. We rushed for one yard shy of 200 yards. You know, we had a 100 yard rusher. Um, you know, I tell you, that, that's, uh, that's something that we got to really, you know, continue to develop and, and have that mindset, no matter who we play, uh, that we're going to be able to run the ball. Uh, but physically, we're much more physical. You know, we're bigger, we're stronger, uh, we're better conditioned. You know, we're more determined. Uh, I tell you, I was real pleased with Sales at center, first time starting. I mean, here's a guy who uh, transferred in from Delaware State, one double A, and he's starting against 358 pounders, and they're taking care of business up front. You know, I love the way Carlson. I mean, those guys. When you really watch them, it's 50 percent of the game. I'm on the 50 percent kick today, but 50 percent of the game that nobody even knows going on and exists. You know, but I watched that, and I tell you, there was a lot of very special moments that a lot of people have no idea was going on down there in the trenches uh, with Carlson and Davis and Graham Wintery and, and uh, you know, Geo and, you know, and Dylan Guy and, uh, you know, cranking it up in some critical situations. We had a fourth down uh, that we had to convert. We were able to do that. Um, and they were able to sustain that effort all the way to the end and be able to score four minutes left in the game. Uh, yeah, I felt good about where our offensive line is. We need to get better. There's no question, but uh, you know I feel that they are hungry uh, to continue doing the things I'm asking them to do to continue keeping that identity as part of who we are uh, each and every week. And Bo's done a tremendous job in motivating them along with Alex.